King of Glory come in. We are so glad you're joining us on Hope Today. I'm here with Tom Hollis, and today you're going to hear about how God is moving all around the world. And so we're so glad that you're joining us because we know that hope not only happens here, but God is truly moving in every sphere and every place, Tom. Yeah, you know, Sydney, a lot of times I think that we, uh, we, we, we use our own frame of reference and, and, and what our church is going through and what our lives are going through. But when you hear the word Iran, what do you think of? You hear that country. Well, if you're of a, an age uh, such as me, you might think of the hostage crisis or you, you might think of a, a closed off militant Islamic uh, regime there. And that would be true. But Dr. Hormuz Shariat, the president of Iran Alive Ministries, is going to be with us in just a second. And man, there are amazing things happening in Iran. You're going to hear some amazing stories and some amazing things that God is doing uh, there that I just, I just can't wait for you to hear him and to hear. Also, he has a very interesting take on, uh, on Jeremiah, I think, what is it, Jeremiah 49. And you're going to want to hear where Iran fits in prophecy of today. It's going to be a great discussion. Well, I love to always hear how God is moving. And I know he's doing so many amazing things in the Middle East. And so I'm so excited to hear about what God is doing, how he's moving. And we also have an update, Tom, about what is going on in Ukraine. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, if you remember late last year, we uh, put out the call that uh, our friend Philip Cameron and his ministry, Orphan's Hands, was doing some great things where they're in Moldova, right near Ukraine, and they were going across the border and bringing food and bringing supplies, but they needed coats for the winter. And you all responded amazingly and brought, we had 3,000 coats and, and gloves and hats and everything that we sent over there, and they just gave us an update on it. Watch this. Hey, CTVN, Tom, all our family there, friends. Uh, we are standing in a refugee center in uh, Yungain, Moldova at the moment. Uh, we're about to hand out the warm blankets you see behind us, all these coats and these boxes that you see, many that have been donated from CTVN in the Pittsburgh area. Um, and then we've got groceries, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of groceries through in another room that we're about to give uh, to these people as well. And we just wanted to take a moment and say thank you uh, for getting involved. The 3,000 coats and thousands of hats and scarves that you guys gave uh, are impacting real lives. And uh, we're just so excited that we get the opportunity to hand those out in a few moments to these people uh, who have lost everything from what happened this past year. Uh, but we appreciate you all. We are thankful for you all. And uh, you know we just can't say enough and how uh, you know, much you, we appreciate you all. So thank you so much and God bless, God bless. you. Cindy, I love that video. I see those U-Haul boxes, those are our U-Haul boxes over there. And uh, I see some of the coats that we packed are being pulled out. I knew it would be like this. They're kind of looking at them and trying to size them up for their, themselves or their kids. But it's great to see that they're making an impact. They're doing something. And really, you, you did this. You all that responded, that brought up coats. We had so many that we couldn't believe how many people responded. And uh, it was fantastic. And we shipped a whole big truckload of coats over there. Fantastic things. I think it's so beautiful. You see, when the body of Christ, when we come together, we can truly be the hands and feet. And so we just want to say thank you again for all of your donations and all that you've done to make it possible. And I just want to even encourage you today. I know in our world, there are so many things, especially in 2023, that is happening, even in our city, even in our nation, in our world. And maybe this is a time as you were watching that video and seeing what was happening in Ukraine. I just encourage you to just ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, what can I do? to be a light in the midst of the darkness. We know there's so many shakings, there's so many rumblings, there's so many things that are happening in our world and we know it's gonna to continue to get darker, but we are called to be the light. And so we just wanna encourage you today, just seek the Father and be like, God, what can I do today? What difference can I make today? Because Tom, truly, one thing I love that I'm our dear friend, I remember James Gall, he said, it's like, we're called to be hope solutionists. If we do not do the call of action, who is? So I think it's right. time for us to like stand in the gap, to pray, but truly to walk and be the light. We've all got something that we can do. It's amazing. It could be giving a coat. It could be traveling around the world, sharing the gospel, but it could be just traveling across your street and sharing the love of God with someone. Well, our next guest is very passionate about that, about bringing Iranians to Christ. 
He is the founder and president of Iran Alive Ministries, which aims to transform Iran, listen to this, into a Christian nation, one soul at a time. Dr. Hormuz Shariat is a great friend of ours here at Cornerstone Television Network, and he joins us now to share more about what's going on in Iran and how Iran fits into biblical pro prophecy. Dr. Hormuz, it's great to have you back with us on Hope Today. Thank you. It's good to be here and share what the Lord is doing. Well, when you were introduced to me a few uh, years ago, you were introduced as the Billy Graham of Iran. And I'll never forget your response when someone introduced you that way. You said, so many people are coming to Christ in Iran. Anybody could be the Billy Graham of Iran. So tell me about that, because we don't, we don't see that side of what's going on in Iran. Well, we know the Lord loves uh, the world that he sent his son. And Muslims are included in this world. So uh, the Lord loves Muslims and he wants uh, them to get saved. How? By showing the true face of Islam. And that's what has happened in Iran. For the last 40 years of Islamic rule, the people of Iran have come to have an experience, to have a great and deep look at Islam and experience it for 40 years. And they've come, Iranian people, Iranian Muslims have come to this conclusion. Islam is not our way, it's not the solution, it's the source of our problem and we need to get rid of it. So that's what's happening in Iran. The Lord has used the suffering of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the oppression it has brought to open the eyes and hearts of the Iranians. They're having a look at Islam and they're saying, we don't want it. And what else is out there? And that's where we come. We need to present the gospel, present Jesus in a clear way and once they hear it, many, many of them are coming to Christ. And Iran, yes, Iran will be a Christian nation. Sometimes people ask me, where did you get that idea? Well, that's crazy. Iran, Islamic nation, to be a Christian nation? I say, yes, where did you get that idea? I say, I stole it. I stole it from, where did you steal it from? I stole it from the Lord in Jeremiah 49, 38. That's what the, where the Lord promises that he will set his throne in Iran. Setting his throne is, is a major promise. It's more than just many come to Christ. He is going to rule the hearts and minds of the Iranians in a very near future. Yes. In fact, let's, let's read that verse right now because we wanted you to comment a little more about that. Jeremiah 49, 38, and it says this. I will set my throne in Elam, says the Lord, and I will destroy its king and officials. Now that, that sounds like a really hard word more than a promise, but tell me uh, your interpretation, and again, of Elam, is that, is that modern day Iran? Yes, Elam is completely inside the land of Iran today. And so uh, any prophecies in the Bible about Persia and Elam both are being fulfilled in Iran today because both of them are part of today's Iran. And uh, Ezekiel 38 talks about Iran uh, with Russia and other nations attacking Israel. That's really negative. We, we will, it will happen in the future. And we can see the government of Iran developing nuclear bomb, trying to fulfill that without them knowing they want to attack Israel. But when you come to the people of Iran, who are so different from the government of Iran, the people of Iran are fulfilling Jeremiah 49, 38. So the government of Iran is trying to fulfill Ezekiel 38. The people of Iran at this same time are fulfilling Jeremiah 49, 38. Now, setting his throne, his throne is not of this world. Uh, what does it mean? Does it mean many millions come to Christ? Yes, of course, many Iranians are coming to Christ. Does it mean many churches? Yes, there are underground churches, and soon we will see uh, churches in every city. But it's more than that. You know, I live in Dallas. There's so many churches here. Uh, and But I don't think God can say, I rule Dallas. I rule Texas. With all the Christians, all the churches. So Iran will be a nation, as a nation, love the Lord worship the Lord and obey the, wor the word of God. And that's the future of Iran. By the way, it, it's happening. It's, we are moving in the fulfillment of that prophecy very, very fast. Iranians are coming to Christ like never before. 
I, I, I'm amazed to hear uh, even a statistic. Uh, what was it? 19% uh, of the uh, a growth in the church in just uh, just in a very short time. But let me let me ask you something else. We've seen, what we have seen on TV in the last few few months is the uh, women protesting, taking to the streets, protesting against having to wear head coverings because of an incident where one woman showed up without a head covering and was beaten to death. And that's been the government's, uh, every time there's some kind of protest or some kind of uh, freedom begins to break out, their, their response has been to clamp down and to persecute and to imprison and, and, and to do beatings and things. What is happening in all this? Well, <laughs> there are many things happening in Iran, which is very unique and first, in history. And one of them is what you mentioned. Iran is the only nation in the history where there is a revolution happening led by women. The women, the Islamic women who are coming to Christ and the Islamic women who have rejected Islam, they are the, the forefront of revolution in Iran. This uprising is not going to go away. It's going to turn into a revolution. The government is killing many people, including many women, many young people, many children but uh, they cannot stop it. So that's one unique thing. Women-led revolution in Iran is happening. And why? Because they're oppressed. You know, when uh, you're in darkness and you, those who are in darkness, they come to light, they appreciate the light. So women of Iran, when they come to Christ and they realize their value, their identity in Christ, because in Islam, they are just a property. They are just slaves to men. And suddenly they are set free and their children and their princesses of God. Suddenly these women become agents of transformation. When a woman comes to Christ in Iran, they, she starts letting many people to Christ. She's not afraid. Many of them say, I'm not afraid. I was dead anyway. I was worthless anyway. So women both political revolution in Iran and spiritual revolution in Iran, the women are at the forefront. It's truly incredible, Dr. Hormuz, what we're seeing is going on in Iran with the revolution. I just want to ask you, you know, here in America, what are things that we can do for prayer or even reaching out to the Iranian community just to show the love of Christ? What are some practical things that we can do now? Well, Iran has the potential, actually, it has a promise that will turn to Christ. And he, you know, setting God's throne in Iran, uh, God is not going to be happy just ruling Iran. He's going to use Iran to reach out to the whole world. So Iran is the key, not just to the Middle East, but the whole world, because he says, I will set my throne there. What should we do? Of course, the prayer, because we know the Prince of Persia is there. You know, Daniel talks about Prince of Persia, and we have to win the war first in the heavenlies. But also, this is a historical opportunity to turn an Islamic nation to a Christian nation. God has started the fire. He wants us to cooperate with him, do our part. He needs to, uh, for us to add fuel to that fire. The fire already has started. Now, what is the need? Is that evangelism? I say no. <laughs> evangelism is easy. The simplest message of the gospel that I share on the air Many, many are coming to Christ. As you know, we have a 24-7 satellite broadcast. We go over the heads of the mullahs into people's homes, and many are coming to Christ. So what is the need? The need here is discipleship and, and training leaders, which we are doing, but the growth is so fast, we cannot catch up. So I'm inviting, yes, pray. Yes, if you the Lord leads you to support us financially, but also Come and join us, disciple that nation. Many, many new believers, many babies in Christ, they need milk, they need meat, they need to grow fully in Christ, and we need help there. Absolutely. You know, you, you shared something with me that I think uh, is good to bring out. Uh, we've heard in many cases in the Islamic world that when a person comes to Christ from a Muslim background, that they're not only persecuted culturally, but they're per, uh, from the government, but they're persecuted from their family. Tell me what goes on in Iran, though. It's a little bit different there. Yeah, Iran is a very unique Islamic nation. Uh, first of all, it's the first Islamic nation where uh, Islam has uh, experienced its defeat. It's a de 
you know, there was a recent survey asking 50,000 Iranians, what do you believe? Can you believe it? Less than one third said, we believe in Islam. When I pe tell people Iran is no more, no longer an Islamic nation, people say, crazy, are you crazy? Just Google it, it's 98%. But no, recent survey, less than one third say we, we, are, we believe in Islam. So Islam has been uh, defeated. That's one thing. Now, another one is, is uh, persecution. As you mentioned, it's so unique. In any other Islamic nation, when somebody comes to Christ, the persecution comes usually from friends and family members or neighbors. Sooner or later, they have to run for their lives because of their family, friends, and they want to kill them. But not in Iran. Iran, Islam is non-issue. People have rejected Islam and they hate the government. So when a family member comes to Christ, this is the norm. Most of the time, many of the family members come to Christ also. And even if they don't, they have a positive view of Christianity. Can you believe it, Larry? I've done this. I've, I've asked uh, Muslims in Iran, what do, you, what do you believe about Islam? These are Muslims, okay? And I usually hear like this. Oh, I don't believe the, this Islam. I don't believe this God. Uh, I don't believe uh, what these mullahs are telling me. I, and I tell them, so what do you believe? He said, I believe if there, there is God, it is a God of love. He loves us and asks us to love one another. I think if there is God, he will forgive us and wants to ask to, uh, us to forgive one another. Without knowing, they, they describe the God of the Bible. That's why when I share the gospel, it resonates with what's in their heart. And uh, when they come to Christ, people see a life transformation. And many, many uh, family members come to Christ. Just last week, I was talking to somebody from Iran, and he was so excited. He he, he was saying, ah, so I was, you know what's happening? Just all these suffering, all the killings on the streets has opened the hearts of the people. And that's what he said. He said, my family were against my faith in Christ. Just six months ago, they were telling me, we're going to turn you in if you don't come back to Islam. Of course, they were threatening. And he said, the last three months when the, since the prote protest had started, he said, I have led 23 of my friends and family members to Christ. Those who used to threaten me, those who used to be against Christ, they're coming to Christ. So there is a move of God in Iran. And if we work together, Iran will be the first Islamic nation that comes to Christ. <laughs> that, that is thrilling. It, was, it would be thrilling. I just have this picture of this jewel of Christ Christian uh, uh, you know, Christianity right there in the Middle East. But um, let me ask you a little bit about your ministry because you said something about broadcasting over the head of the mullahs. I, li I like that. I, I, I like that imagery. But, you know, um, in Iran, the, the Internet is suppressed uh, quite a bit and, and people don't have Internet access. You think, well, they would go looking for alternatives on the Internet, but they don't really have that, that kind of access. But they do have access to satellite broadcasts like yours. Uh, tell me the power of Christian television in Iran. Exactly. That's the only way to get to a close country like Iran in, and in the privacy of their homes. Internet is very controlled. Many times they shut it down when there are protests on the streets. They just completely shut it down. And even when it's working, they're watching people. They, you know, it's technology. They know which website you went yesterday, last night. They keep track of you. And many times people are being arrested for even going to a website and doing a like, that, that's dangerous. Going to a Christian website, writing a comment, or just doing a like, you can you could be get arrested, and some people some people have. So it is a <clears throat> satellite television. Of course, in the US, we see fewer and fewer people watching satellite, and they're they're going on <laughs> online to watch things. But because of the limitation of internet, satellite television still Number one, everyone has a satellite dish, even the government officials. So this is the time to go into people's homes, to living rooms, to even bedrooms, look at their eyes and tell them Jesus loves you. And that's what we are doing. And they, they're looking for a God who is loving. They're sick and tired of this violent and, and threatening God of Islam. And they're looking for the true God.
That is so great. And I, I, would, uh, I would encourage everyone, uh, in fact, what's your website? We want to make sure that people are able to, to go to your website. And I would encourage everyone to sign up for your uh, email newsletter or your daily updates because there are great stories coming all the time. Tell us what your website is. Yes, uh, please go to iranalive.org, iranalive, one word, dot org. And uh, sign up for a newsletter or email. The newsletter is once uh, a month, you receive that. Uh, email is once a week, you, you receive that. But every time, every time, amazing stories, um, amazing happening of what's going on in Iran. We share that, we share that. And you will be up to date you will be not just informed, but you will be inspired. And we need we need that in America. As persecution is coming to U.S., we need to learn from our brothers and sisters in Iran who have been persecuted, how to stand firm and how to be a light in the darkness. That's right. Absolutely. Thank you. And we will have a link on ctvn.org to your website. Dr. Shariat, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We are excited to hear what God is doing. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Sydney. I appreciate you. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, God is about changing things where we think he can't change things. He can do a miracle. And you know what? He can do a miracle for you. We're going to be back with a time of ministry in just a second. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. We're so glad you're joining us on Hope today. And we just wrapped up our conversation about what God is doing in Iran. And maybe you're sitting at home and you're watching and you're hearing about the stories and you're hearing about the testimonies. But I know a heart cry for many of you is my home and what is happening. And I know there's such a heart cry, Tom, that all around, that people are desperate and are crying out for a move of God to happen in their families. And so I just really feel impressed in my spirit that we just declare and decree in this moment that what is God is doing over in Iran, it is coming right now Amen. into your living room, into your family. Maybe there's a prodigal son or daughter. Maybe you have a wayward son or daughter. Maybe a son that's in addiction. Maybe a daughter that has run away. Whatever it may be, we know that God is a God of impossibilities, that that he, there's nothing that is too hard for God. And so I just really feel like in this moment, just to take a moment to pray for you. So Father God, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. we just lift up everyone that's watching right now. And Father God, we just declare and decree that you are the King of glory. And we pray, Father God, that you would just come in into those broken places. God, you are a God that repair of the breach and restoration. So Father God, we pray that as you are moving in Iran, as you're moving in Asbury, as you're moving in India, as you are moving all over yes. the world, we pray, God, that you would not forget about our loved ones and that as we humble ourselves, that, God, we would fear you. And because of your great love for us, that you would come down, that you would make room. We would make room for you. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Sydney, as you were praying and as you were speaking, um, uh, I felt impressed by the Holy Spirit. God loves the hardest cases. What we would think would be the most impossible place, Iran, is where he is building his kingdom incredibly. God loves that. And guess what? He loves that for you too. What's the hardest case you know? What's the hardest situation? God loves that. There's a old time evangelist, C.T. Study said, go for souls and go for the worst. You know, okay. God loves to Get the, the person that we think is the hardest, the ones that's never gonna come to Christ, Sydney, the one that seems like they're sinning their whole life away and never gonna come to Christ. 
He loves that, to bring that person. Maybe you're that person. Maybe you're the one that you say, I was so far from God and I'm, I'm watching you today. Well, I wanna just tell you, you can come to God right now. Just open your heart, open your life, ask for forgiveness of your sins, take him as your Lord and Savior and follow after Christ. God is gonna do something amazing. It's like a garden growing, Sydney. Mm -hmm. It's fresh and new. Pretty soon all the flowers will be growing around here. It'll be all fresh and new and that's what God loves to do. He loves to do and just even you were speaking that God just put this in my spirit about there's in Psalm and it says, even if I make my bed in hell, you are there and that's speaking of God. That doesn't matter how dark we go, doesn't matter what the situation is, it's not too hard for him. So maybe you're watching today and you are in a really tough situation or you're just like, God, why me? I just wanna give up. He's reaching down to that deep, dark place and let his love just rush into your heart and just surrender all. That is the most beautiful place is that when we all come to that place of surrender, when we lay our lives down before him, even I just encourage you, maybe that's your thought for your loved one, that you see the mistakes that they're making. I just encourage you today, lay it all down before God. Take that burden, it's too heavy for you to carry. And then when you place it at his feet and you trust in the Lord, watch how he moves, watch how he does a miracle in the heart. The greatest miracle that we can ever see is a changed heart. That's right. God can do the impossible. So have you surrendered? That's the thing, I love that word. God is impressing that word on me. Christian, have you surrendered? Person who feels far from God, well, you know you need to surrender to Christ. That just means that whole thing of laying it all down, laying it down and say, Lord, I've made a mess of things. I'm laying that down. You, you bring it up. You resurrect it. That's what he loves to do and that's what he's doing for you today. And Christian, maybe you've walked with the Lord for a long time. Maybe it's a time of surrender for you too. So we're so glad that you joined us for this time on Hope Today where we heard how God is moving and God is on the move. I love that so much. Just to take a moment, he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And just remember that no matter what you're walking through, if you're on the mountaintop, or if you're in the valley, or you're in a hard place, that God is with you in the midst of it all. And that is our greatest hope. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover one man's journey from ruin to restoration. Former Major League Baseball player Jason Grimsley shares the highs and lows of his career and offers proof that God can take a broken person and put them back together. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.